Hello everyone, this is the second video of my Rust crash course and in this video I'm going to talk about variables and constants in Rust. So if you haven't already, check out the previous video in which I explain how to install Rust and how to create your first project. In fact, we are going to start from the previous project Hello Rust that we created in the previous video. Okay, so let's start creating a variable. So to create a variable in Rust, use the keyword let and then a variable name such as hello with a value, okay? So at this point, what we want to do is to print this hello and we are going to modify this print ln statement that we did last time with this syntax. We open and close brackets and then comma and the variable name. If you are familiar with Python, uh, this is very similar to the format uh, method of strings in which basically print takes the value of the variables and puts where the brackets are. Okay, so if we now execute this program, we save it and we execute it, we can see that hello one. Okay, so it works correctly. And of course, if we change the value, we're going to see another value. Okay, one thing to keep in mind with Rust is that variables are immutable by default. Okay, so if I now try, try to type hello equals to three and to compile it, what I see is that the compiler won't compile and uh, it's going to complain basically. And uh, you're going to experience this very often because the Rust compiler is uh, and can be very picky at times. But this is not a bad thing because uh, what it does is executing a lot of checks. And if your program compiles correctly, then it means that most likely it is a safe program and it's not going to crash. Okay, so um, you have to trust the compiler. Another good thing about the Rust compiler is that the error messages are very informative. So in this case, it says cannot assign twice to immutable variable hello but it also gives us a hint to solve the problem, okay? So make this variable mutable, okay? With the, the mute keyword. So what I'm, I'm going to do now is introducing the mutable variables in Rust. So what I do is just placing the mute keyword after let, and then if I try to compile it now, it works perfectly, okay? At this point, uh, we are going to introduce uh, constants that are another very important uh, piece of uh, Rust. Okay, so in order to declare a constant, what I do is writing const, then the variable name, world, and then a value, okay, five. Now, if you try to compile it now, what you will see is that we are missing a type for the const, the word uh, uh, const. Okay, you see, um, even though here we, ha we didn't specify a type explicitly, as you would do, for example, in Java, Rust is indeed a statically typed language, which means that it does require specifying types. And the syntax to do so is after the variable or const name, you place your um, colon and then the variable type, so the const type. So in this case, uh, we want an integer, which is written as i32. Okay, so if I now try to print the word const, what I'm going to see is hello5. And one thing that is pretty good about const is that they can be uh, declared uh, globally. So it often happens that we want to define some kind of parameter, const, and so on, and we place it in the global scope. So again, if we try to compile, it does compile correctly. One thing that is pretty um, strange in Rust is a feature called variable shadowing. For example, let's say, let's write let hello equals to five. Then I'm going to uh, print it, hello. As you can see, hello five, okay? I know that uh, from before that if I try to type hello equals to three, then a compiler will complain because uh, it is immutable, hello, it is immutable. But what we can do is redefining another variable with the same name. So if I type let hello equals to three and compile it, then it's going to work perfectly. So 
and this is quite strange compared to other languages, you can define another variable with the same name that basically will take place of the previous variable, okay? Why is this feature useful? And the idea is that we want to avoid inventing new names for variables that are semantically similar. A common example would be, for example, um, this one. So we have hello, which is equivalent to a string of a number, okay, such as hello5. In other languages, if you want to use the numeric value of the string, you would have a variable called, for example, hello string, hello str, and then a new variable, hello, which will be the conversion between the string and the number that in Rust can be done in this way, hello stir, point parse, then uh, the type, i32, wrap. I'm going to explain this a lot better in future videos, but for now on, follow along. If I now compile it, what you can see is that, of course, hello5 does print without errors, okay? But uh, we have created two variables, which is kind of inconvenient. What I do is using shadowing to reuse the same name so that uh, also from a cognitive point of view, you don't have to create uh, awkward variable names. You just use the right variable name. So again, if I compile, everything works as expected. And to finalize the idea, um, I want to talk about uh, explicit uh, variable types. In this case, again, as I said before, variable the variable type has been inferred by the compiler. In this case, it is uh, an integer, okay? And uh, of course, you can also explicitly uh, tell the compiler the type because sometimes you have to do it. What you do is just type a comma and then the type i32, which is absolutely equivalent so that was all for this video. I hope uh, you understood all the concepts. If you haven't, uh, please write a comment below and uh, we'll see in the next video.